Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline. 1 800 Love 191. With Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Yep. That's true. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Aaron Perlis, Dr. Drew, Mike, Robin, John are all here from the Goo Goo Dolls. And um, I was asking Ann and, and everybody when they were here last, and we all figured it was about a year. Is that about a year? sound about right? Why and not? The uh, Goo Goo Dolls have been uh, guests on this show so ann says uh throughout i mean uh first album came out in 87 and this must be like your uh, fourth or fifth appearance yeah something like that <laughs> close <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be surreal uh, i i'm not i'm trying to think where i'm gonna be when you have your uh fifth or sixth appearance It'll be some uh be like mark de carlo sitting here <laughs> drew one of your grandkids is gonna be uh over there piloting <laughs> The uh, Dr. C. You know, uh, I want to say uh, congratulations to the band first because uh, the Goo Goo Dolls, uh, a boy named Goo was uh, 95, and it was uh, Goo Goo Doll Mania, and then things calmed down for a while. And the thing I can never figure out, even though uh, we talked a lot of bands and we do this show, is I can't figure out if people are going to come back or they're just we'll gonna they're again, just yeah. gonna drift off and when they do the show and they're friends i always uh hope that they come back yeah but uh, i couldn't tell what was going to happen to the goo goo dolls but uh sure enough i know it, it was it was pretty freaky at the end of the last record because you you see the road ahead of you just littered with the carcasses all the bands that came before <laughs> you <laughs> and you're like whoa well it's just it's bizarre not that <laughs> i don't know why i gotta work this in but i watched a john denver story when i got home i, I saw that <laughs> last night i got home it was like from one to two and he you know here's a guy who had like eight platinum records and five gold records and had like you know 20 number one songs and was on top of the world for five years he couldn't get a record contract in the mid 80s or something like that i mean uh, that's the business but he didn't need one that's true he had his uh, planes and his uh, rocky mountain and his uh, three oh, wives i believe that was the carpenters that were on top of the world though wasn't it? <laughs> they were uh, looking down on creation <laughs> all right let's not go there the uh, goo goo dolls are going to come in and do the uh, tv show tomorrow so uh, it'll be uh, It'll it'll uh, it will lay, it'll be Google Mania. We'll yeah. lay the groundwork of love tonight, and then we'll uh, rekindle it tomorrow about noon. All right, what do we want to do? We we'll take some calls. Let's go to calls. We'll hear uh, yeah. some stuff. Uh, we'll talk about soundtracks. And um, your uh, record guy says that uh, you got another song that's going to be number one. Can you call so Rob your things. record guy? Yeah, well... Rob was an intern of this show for years. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. How come you never said that? I thought you knew. Ask him about when he dropped his pants. Did you drop... Oh, yeah. Rob, We well, had a special name a for him, yes, yes. Really? Oh, yeah. No sack? No, he can tell you. I'll let him... <laughs> oh, Ann can tell you, yes. They called him <laughs> the crank. <laughs> <laughs> really? We're still talking about it. It's weird. Uh, Rob, what, what years were you interning for this show? Years ago, and I was here for like th three years. From when to when? It was like, like eighty nine to ninety. By the way, Ann pulled my pants down. I want to correct that. <laughs> and how? <laughs> and how long did you work here before you pulled your pants down? That's how three he got years. the job. That was yeah, my no, first week. No, no, like, uh, like two years. Wow, I didn't know that, Drew. How years. long did it take you before you pulled your pants down here? I didn't. I never did pull my pants down, but I had to pull the general manager's pants down in order to, <laughs> like I said, get my foot in the door. Something got out here. No, I couldn't keep my job if I if I couldn't handle it. But just to just to get my break, you know, that's yeah. all right. That doesn't make you gay. That's just work. Carl. Yeah. What's up? You're 20. Yep. What's going on? Um. Well, lately, I mean, well, first of all, we started out with my my girlfriend and me. Um. I was pretty much her first one, like the real, like love, and I was. Uh, she was my first love. And, Are you uh, really twenty, girl? Yeah. Okay. Why? Just go right ahead. No, I'm just nervous. That's why. Okay. Um, and um, what else? Um, basically, what happened? Um, been going on for about three years now, and um, 
when I was um, going to college, basically, I kind of lost interest in everything in her in the relationship. But I didn't break it off. I just went to college and I kind of ignored her. We still talked once in a while, but whatever. And, and you know, it was okay. But you know, she felt you know, kind of isolated. And then when I came back um, from college, I just realized you know what I had really had, and I you know. Um, What's your question? Mm, let me translate. He didn't get laid in college right, much. Right. No, I, no, I, no. I see. I didn't want to because I was keep thinking about it. <laughs> what is your accent? I, that's why I stopped you about your accent. Polish. What is it? Polish. Okay. It, make, it makes your Same use thing. of language sound what? interesting. Polish. Polish. Oh, yak shemash. Yeah. He called you an asshole, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, but here's what I'm guessing, okay. Carl. You were not a chick magnet in in college. Oh, oh no, really? I, do I had chicks all over me. All right, all right, I, just, right. I just didn't feel like I, I don't know. It just it wasn't. The same. Look, he just idealized this growing up back, and let me let me guess even further. Uh, she doesn't want to date him anymore. That is especially um, no. The right thing, now. she. I mean, listen, let me tell you what happened within like um past week. Um, okay. She told me she she needs some space. She she's very confused. Basically, what that's what I'm saying. She doesn't want to date. Yeah, but now she uh, today, yeah she today she wants she wants to date with me again. She said, you know, because she met some guy, she yeah. kissed him yesterday, and she, they spent time together in some romantic place. Now she wants to get back with me together, and she realized, you know, that, you know, I'm better, and then she doesn't need anything else. She is just working you, Carl. That's all. I, you I, think? I, yeah. Yeah, but maybe it's a little payback from him Absolutely. sort of working her. Really? When you think so? Absolutely. But see, she had a hard life, though. She really had, had a really hard life. What I mean, happened Her to parents her? are divorced. Yeah. Uh, her father's alcoholic. I mean, her stepmother is a bitch. I mean, and she has a lot of problems. Are you an alcoholic? Huh? Are you an alcoholic? No, 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 no. I'm, I never, I never drink or swear, nothing like that, man. Well, I mean, well, occasionally drink, but. Right. Well, you're so. Polish. How can you not be an alcoholic? I know, I know, right? It's, it's odd. All my Polish friends are like in the gutter right now. I only I mean, say that because I'm Polish. So well, I mean. uh, he. He, he, in, in Poland, if you just drink like a fifth of gin a day, you're considered in the program. I mean, that's, that's not our fault. You're going to after a while. Yeah. All right, Carl? Yeah. Uh, I, you both sound kind of confused. I don't know if either one of you deserve yeah, each really, other. I mean, I really, I'm into her right now. Well, then, then date her, but realize that it's, it's going to be a chaotic ride. She's not really ready to commit to anybody. And uh, it's not going to be a pretty pleasant experience, I don't think. Yeah. Really it, uh, it's like some the government should intervene in your first relationship and break you up at the 18 month mark because every person we speak to their first relationship always drags out another year and a half two years longer than it should right when you get older you see the signs real fast and it's just like up uh, this is done. I'm moving on. I've done it before. Signs? I'll do it again. What are the signs? Me in the groin. <laughs> that's uh, the first one. That's one. That's always a good one. Uh, when somebody starts sort of, you first off, you understand what I need my space means. Yeah. Right. Uh, means that I means like I need my space away from you. Right. And you, so you start picking up on what they're putting down. They pick up on what you're putting down. And it just, the whole process becomes More efficient. easier. More efficient. Right, but you don't know how to break up when you're uh, out of your first relationship, and they drag on, and people are go at each other, and it, that's what this one smells like. Yeah, I think so. from here, Christine. Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. What's um, going on? I have a question for Drew. Yeah. Um, sometimes after I eat, I make myself throw up. Okay. And I was just wondering what kind of effects it has on the body. Well. You know, Adam gets mad at me when I sort of jump to the most uh, egregious circumstance, but certainly this is a fatal condition. Give her the uh, you die one. Yeah, you, you can die. It's, that's, uh, that's, that's, Drew's, Drew, what's your other answer I hate? Uh, what's the only form of uh, safe sex or what oh, is that? Right. Abstinence. Yeah, that's such a retarded, what's the safest <laughs> way to fly, Drew? on the ground. That's right. Thank you. I got to be in Chicago this weekend, you jackass. So this is no answer. But, uh, I mean, I can read you a list of all the deleterious consequences of, of, of bulimia, which is what you have. It's about a 20% fatality rate with bulimia, okay? I don't, I don't like binge. I don't buy 20 You don't have to just binge, okay? Let me read you some of the things. Low white count, anemia, low platelet count. Uh, kidney failure, liver function test elevated, low magnesium, low phosphorus, low calcium, alkalosis, low potassium, thyroid abnormalities, abnormalities of your adrenal and your, your ovary function, demineralization of your bone, 
arrhythmias, death. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But isn't that a small a price to pay to look good in a teeth, skirt, Drew? I teeth mean, rot out. Yeah, I think it's more low self-esteem myself. Well, it, it, certainly eating disorders always have an element of esteem issues in them, but it is, it is a separate disorder. I mean, not everyone with low self-esteem manifests an eating disorder. And it's something that has to be treated, Christine. It's like alcoholism. It's a chronic condition, and it can be put into remission, but it is extremely dangerous. Because I'm having stomach aches now, and I don't know if it's... Christina, you, know, Christine, you need to talk to somebody about it. I mean, you, it, it's... How long have you been doing it? Um, on and off for the past year. Yeah, I mean... Well, why... You know, do people get started at uh, 22? It's late, but they can, sure. I bet she's had eating issues. Yeah, I've had it, you know, I started, like, growing up in 94, yeah. but I just, um, now, it's been more pronounced. Yeah. Now. Are you something stressing you out right now? Um, I have a stressful job. Yeah. Um, sort of a way, I, I really began to think about eating disorders as a way people empower, feel empowered. It's certainly not obvious to you now. I'm sure you feel, you feel out of control, but it's a way when you, when you really feel threatened to try to empower yourself in a way that's very dysfunctional and extremely compulsive, and it has to be stopped because you can die. You 20%. Mean, well, one out of five can die of this, this disorder when you have it. You mean so. it's a way of uh, taking control of yourself? Well, it's I. That's what people always have told me when, when I've talked to psychiatrists about this. That it's you know it's a control issue. I think it's more of an empowerment. It's a way of taking on a a, a punitive or or depriving role and feeling empowered in that way. But it's so amazing what food, how much food stands for other than just uh, calories and nutrition. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like eat when you're depressed. Uh, eat eat when well, celebrate. Well, I mean, it goes back to early stages of development when our oral gratification oral needs are all that we had uh, I know well, well, most yeah. of us develop a little beyond that and we get some fixations along the way Adam uh, hey, <laughs> listen you know my my stupid family made the mistake of trying to feed me you know too much granola and wheat germ for too long when I was young and then I flipped out and went the other way did you say you like count chocula hooked on uh in and out burgers. Yeah, I would oh, that's, go. That's, that's health food for him. Really? Yeah. Oh, about? Shut up, Trey. Yeah, I will just, I will just take my hand right into a lard bucket and just uh, <laughs> scoop it into my mouth while I'm feeding like an abba zabba rectally <laughs> me because I, I like to have both orifices working at the same time. No, here, here's what happens. My mom was like whole wheat everything, you know, um, um, tofu everything. And, you know, stuff tastes like crap when you're 11, 12 years old. And I would go over to my neighbor's house and babysit, and I would go nuts in the pantry. I mean, I'd open, I'd, first thing I'd do is go right for the pantry, and I'd open pie filling. Oh. <laughs> pie filling, you, it, it, here's what pie filling is. If it's a 16-ounce can, there's 18 ounces worth of sugar. Oh, yes in there you just uh, for, i don't know how it works out mathematically but there's more volume it's of sugar under, than the pressure of the, yeah they pressure. must pressurize it <laughs> it's, they take sugar they make it into a gas and they, they they stuff it into the tank somehow but it's it's uh pie filling with like mini marshmallows and count chocula and like whipped cream and I, I, you know just pile on some toll house nuggets and i just go go insane and it was it was like it was a backlash from right. too much uh, too much granola and too much of that uh, goddamn Yul Gibbons in the seventies with the, the you can eat parts of a pine cone and that whole mess. Jacob, 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 you're sixteen. Uh, uh, what's up? Um, you guys heard pheromones, right? Yep. Um, have you ever heard of um making that stuff? And make like liquid, like cologne type thing. Yeah, people have been researching that sort of stuff for quite some time. Oh. This is basically Drew. Explain pheromones. Pheromones are, are chemicals that are given off in very tiny quantities that are thought to elicit biological reactions in other people. One of them, perhaps, being sexual arousal or attraction, perhaps. But uh, this is this is Jacob's way of asking about a Spanish fly. This is what we used to, when we were fifteen. That that would be our question. Right. Could you imagine if you had a vial of this? And, and believe me, here's the, the, the uh, misconception about all this junk. It's you're going to slap a little of this stuff off on yourself, and then you're going to break into Cindy Crawford's house, and as she's picking up the phone to call the cops, she's going to slam it down and then jump on you. <laughs> that ain't it. Maybe if you were close with someone, it could nudge you over the top, but you'd have to be real damn close. Yeah. 
Don't that, don't think that way, Jacob. That's not going to be a fruitful source of gratification for you. Does that stuff work though? Pheromone stuff. Yeah, there's probably something to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it works pretty good. It works in, in animals. In the animals. Yeah. Kingdom. And, there, and we have stuff on lower function, lower brain function that certainly we share with animals, and that would do something to us. But whether or not it would really create sustainable or reproducible behaviors not yet proven i would say try malt liquor yeah <laughs> yeah and, and get a 40 <laughs> that'll do it that's better yeah that is a much better icebreaker jacob 16. all right oh all right well oh, forget the malt liquor you when you go for the past tall boys. <laughs> when you're 21 get a... right in about five years you can try something called malt liquor all right jacob all right cool all right, or uh, move to France and uh, start oh. getting loaded. Get a jump on the alcoholism. <laughs> oh, man, did you guys, when you, you guys are from uh, Buffalo, right? Yeah. Did, did you, and it, was it 21 when you were growing up? Because it used to vary from state to state, but uh, I don't know when it became uniform, 21, Ooh, but I think it 80, is now. It was, it was 18. It was. The year you... I turned 18, they changed it to 19. And then... They changed it to 21 when I turned 19. So, but when you were when you were, that sucks. I know it was like every time. Every when time when you me. were like uh, 15, 16 years old, did you yeah. have a liquor store that you knew you could buy beer at, or did you have someone's yeah. older brother? Yeah. Or did you do that thing that where you go to the liquor store and you just wait until some guy looks cool? Like yeah. some guy, he's, hey, this dude's driving El Camino. I, <laughs> <laughs> He'll buy us beer. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He, I guess he, he's got rainbow cranking. Okay, I'm going to talk to this dude. <laughs> hey, man. And you give him that. You remember what it was like to be 15 speech? Yeah. And the guy's got, like, some boots and a handlebar mustache, and he's going in to Cyber. buy something, too. Right. Oh, great. So you give the guy uh, eight bucks, and he comes back with a five-pack. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what are you going to do? If I jump up and punch him or start arguing with him or call the cops or something. Did you do that here? Did you do that? Oh, yeah. It, the, thing? The, thing, the thing that we did, and I, you know, I don't think you can do any of this, was A, find somebody to go in and buy it for you, which I don't know if that goes on so much anymore. I never had anyone ask me. I think because people would be arrested. I mean, the, the risks are far higher than they were then. But, Two, there was just a liquor store, usually with some guy from like Albania behind the <laughs> counter who just yeah. really couldn't, he, he, he couldn't judge uh, the Anglo age. He, you know, it was just, he, was, he, he had no barometer for that at all. So you'd go in there at like 14 and a half and he thought, you told me you're 27, you know, and it was like, all right. And, and there was always restaurants, always liquor stores, and you, you knew there, was a, there were a couple of places. Right. And you always took the biggest kid and sent him in to go get it. Tom. Yeah, I am. Hey, 27. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I'm seeing a stripper, and I kind of like want to save her, you know, from the, from the bar where she strips at. Okay, hold on. Just say no more. Really? Right? I mean, you, you, you've you talked to many of, of our caller who's wanted to... S there's there's three, uh, two or three issues here. One is, obviously, this woman's got some issues, and he needs to save her. Right. So his whole saving need is, is one issue. And the other is the phenomenon that men go through when they decide to date somebody in that kind of a lifestyle. Right. That they're okay with it, they're okay with it, they're okay with it, and then, oh, no, 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 not anymore, which is what you speak to normally. And bills, mm -hmm. after bills. Just to stay with her to keep away from the grease ball, you know? Well, are you going out with her now? Yeah, it's been like six months we've been together. And it, 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 you're only, you're, it's exclusive, you're just going out with her, she's just going out with you? Right. And how long did you stock her at the bar before you, you got your first date? Oh, just a couple days. Really? She's I, I must Quick have start. dropped like uh, seventeen thousand dollars <laughs> over at the uh, Star Garden in North Hollywood before I got the. Uh, this I, is uh, <laughs> Southern California here. Yeah, that's where I was. Okay. I was uh, at the Star Garden in North Hollywood. I I lived with a stripper about oh Jesus, how many years ago is it? You're like forty years. <laughs> but check this out. I don't know how long. Grad. Yeah, I know. You know, I got from, the uh, same rent. Tom, yeah. please. I know. Stop. She just does the money. She's working her way through uh, college. Yeah. What makes no, you think that she college. wants to be saved? Pardon, Diane? What makes you think that she wants to be saved? Because she's better than that place. That's all. Yeah, that's the, this is the point, Tom. And, and uh, 
and what we're what we're sort of zeroing in on here is first of all it's expansive of you to think that she needs to be saved and it's demeaning to her to think that she needs a savior you're not hercules right and, uh, i want to be her hercules though you know oh man tom you are you for real you sound uh you sound naive about this is that or mm, gay <laughs> no what <laughs> bs yeah no i love all women there's a bs factor here sometimes i'd pick really? another club what's the name of the club uh manage for anybody who knows he uh he got it in there mm. all right does she is does she want to quit uh no the money's pretty good you know yeah yeah it's Unless easy you can't compete uh, they make cash they make you know four or five hundred bucks a night they spend well, i don't all make a million a year so that's hard you right know? all right you're screwed listen she will okay well, should we explore what's up with him why he needs to be a savior i think we should Okay. Hey, listen, it's a natural impulse. You go to the titty bar, you sit there, yeah, but you become is... very enamored with these women, then you begin dating them, and then you become protective over right. them, this, and this, you this don't want other guys looking does, at them. And This doesn't have that feel, though, does it? It's not his other guys. It's, it's more about, hey, I just... This is I a wouldn't. guy that was, like, totally, hey, like, weak in high school. Like, you know, you, you, you finally got the girl, and now, you know, you want the girl for yourself. Is basically what it comes down to. You don't want anybody mm -hmm. else Spectre's to see even more than that, too. He's just, you know, he, Tom, it's an ownership thing. Tom? It's not. It's just like... These Did guys you have an addict, call, you have an addict alcoholic it, parent? Those places hey, hey, exploit women. Hey, hey, Tom, Tom. But you went to that place, so were you exploiting her by going there? Or were you contributing to that? So this problem is really with yourself. I mean, you're more, you're just as mad at yourself for going there as you're mad for her for working there. Well, at least I met her there. I mean, that's the best thing that came out of it. He, he's he's saving her. Saving. You, you know what? She doesn't want to be saved, dude. And and you know, it comes back down to the whole thing. Like you're you're trying to play God. Is this and... Diane? No, no. You're thinking of a TV show. Say your name, please, for the uh, for the uh, Tom. radio listener. Not no. you. you... <laughs> <laughs> but. I'm just like here to give you some free advice, okay? All right, but say your name anyway. Jennifer. So, so in in uh, are you, are you you're someone's girlfriend, right? I no, know. She, I play violin. She plays the violin with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Uh, no, don't. Don't uh, be dissing my uh, talent. Well, it's only because you're so damn good looking. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know you were the violin player. You weren't here last time. Where was she? They no. just added the string section. Just listen. What? Man. Just keep your ears open. What are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody introduced her as such. But listen, hey, but who Tom. Who introduced her? I don't know. She wasn't introduced. I'm a professional uh, party crasher. All right, here. shut up, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Drew, you're jackass because she was not introduced. <laughs> and you're the one who bought into it. All right, the deal is, dude, I'm going to tell you straight up. I okay. don't think I think what you should do is you should really probably just, you know, go to another club and stalk another stripper. Because no, that's, I don't that's, 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 that's horrible <laughs> advice. <laughs> Wait, Tom. Let me get a violin so. and bash her right out of the head with it. That's all you get. Tom. Yeah. Do you have an addict or alcoholic parent? Pardon? Do you have an addict or alcoholic parent? No. What was the situation in your family system? Good. No. I had a good time when I was a kid. No. There's something sort of like no. a schizoid about it. Absolutely. Okay, um, the, the chick got it right. I was kind of weak in high school, though. Right. Yeah. Like, like computer. Uh, just like a dork, you know? Yeah. Right. Like, kind of like Adam might have been, you know? Oh, wait a minute. That was all Val and a football yeah, team. I've heard you talk about yourself. The well, stripper might have been a dork in high school, too. I didn't get laid much, but that's well, because I, mean. I was committed to my masturbation. That's all. <laughs> I could have. Just had no motivation. You're, what, what everybody is basically trying to say is that you're making her into a vice, and um, she's, like, she's like something that you're, you know, you're addicted to now. Yeah. And it's it's an addictive personality because you you want it's a, it's a control thing you want you want control over her over her and you want to win her over so that you can like get some kind of validation for your own life. Wow! Wow! You do strip and play the violin? Hell no! I'm a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Drew. Yeah. Are we done here? Yeah. Okay. Our work is done. All right. The Goo Goo Dolls <laughs> are here. And uh, we're going to hear something uh, off the latest CD, Dizzy Up the Girls, and uh, I should say girl plural, and we'll be back. You have five seconds. Listening to Zone 105. Hey, there. it's Loveline. Goo Goo Dolls are our guests tonight. 
Dizzy Up the Girl is the name of their latest CD. They are uh, filing back into the uh, studio as we speak. Drew is nowhere to be found, so I'm going to give some uh, dates out. These are some places you can find the Goo Goo Dolls, and uh, these are uh, places we're in, so if I uh, skip oh, a few, yeah, don't, don't get nervous. I'll just uh, give people a heads up on when you're coming to town. Uh, October 22nd, they're going to be in Santa Ana. On the uh, 23rd, they'll be in Las Vegas. 27th, Austin, Texas. 31st, they'll be in Orlando, Florida. November, they're going to be, uh, on the 5th, they'll be in uh, Washington, D.C. The 11th, they'll be in Cleveland. 13th, New York. 14th, Boston. 16th, Detroit. 21st of November, Chicago. 22nd, Minneapolis. And the 24th, they'll be in Denver. And um, then they're going to kill themselves wow. on the 25th. That's, so. <laughs> that's, we, we, that's the first time I heard all those dates. This is Jennifer's first tour with us. She's, but... Uh, so she's looking forward to being uh, uh, it Drew and I uh, go out and do this college lecture thing once in a while, and if we do more than two or three in a row, we... Have to take a month off. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I never really appreciated it until uh, we went out on the road for just three or four days. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we're all, you know, we're packed into a van or anything. We're taking planes and uh, getting a limo and stay at a decent hotel and all that stuff. It still it takes it out of you. Still man. takes it out of still you. Still takes it out of you, you know? I I, uh, I couldn't imagine, and in, 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 uh, a lot of the bands we have in here, I mean, did two years straight. Yeah, that's I mean, what we did last time, two oh, years straight. I, I, two uh, years straight. But you know what? You get used to it. You get like a, you get like a cockroach, <laughs> you know? It's like you, you just... You go out and you tour a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and you just sort of, like, build up an immunity to it. But you know? do you think, if, if you were making the schedule, wouldn't you spread it out a little more? Yeah, one show a week. Right. Yeah, one show a week at my house. Uh, right. Yeah. Everybody comes to We me. would just do pay-per-view, <laughs> and we would sing the tracks. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, after nine, because uh, Seinfeld's on. Yeah. And then, yeah, you'll play for 15 minutes, and you take a four-hour break. Right. You know what? It, it <laughs> was good, though. It was, it was good that we had to tour a lot, because it, it made me realize that uh, uh, you have to take better care of yourself. Because oh, yeah. <clears throat> like all that stuff about you know shooting the heroin and and drinking the Jack Daniels all night. I think most of that's mythology though, because I don't uh, you know? I I don't know how people and and Lord knows many a band and many a comic and uh, many a person who's toured has done this. How you can just get loaded every night and get high uh, every day. I mean, how you can grind on your body that way and keep the grind up of the tour i yeah. mean uh, i just couldn't i couldn't imagine some people are just blessed with a healthy constitution right <laughs> and some people are belt are, are blessed with a healthy publicist as well yeah, to help yeah. Them out. who may trump up but, you know, right who may about, trump up the two three times i have, I have a, week. a medical question mm. i have a medical question for you uh we were just in australia i got these um there were effervescent vitamins mm -hmm. called baracus mm -hmm. and uh for some reason they won't sell them here Hmm. But it's like a big heap of B vitamins. I think you can get them with prescription here. Yeah? Yeah. But they were like, they were in my hotel room. They're hangover medicine they use them. Yeah. Well. So they were in the mini bar. Well, yeah, they were in the mini bar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, theoretically, hmm, you're not acutely depleted in B vitamins if you've been drinking a lot. I mean, B vitamins get depleted, but it takes a while. To do but it, it's like speed, though. It felt like... I got a rush from it huh. when, I, when I took it. Just, I don't know what's just a pill. I mean, just a couple of pills. It was like a big. It was like a big uh, cherry, like uh, Alka Seltzer, and you put it in the thing, and you shh, and then you you drink it down, and then it gives you this little boost, and but you jump around. For do you think minutes. it was you know B vitamin and caffeine yeah, or something, something like that? Yeah. Right, there's something in there. But that was true. made by a pharmaceutical company. Yeah, there's something Roast like that, that that is available here, but it's B vitamin. B vitamins. I don't know nothing else. Wasn't in there it. a thing where people were snorting uh, B vitamins or injecting yeah. it or something like that a few years ago, and don't that was all the rage? It sounds vaguely. Familiar. Or am I thinking of like B pollen? B pollen, people took a lot. B of. pollen, where people were taking. Was it B pollen? They say it was curing. They were stinging themselves with bees, and they were saying it was oh, curing yeah, their cancer. Right. And, oh, God, the word. Listen, I've know, seen crazy, in the course yeah. of my. I've been in practice, I've been training plus practice 15 years, and I have seen so many bizarre things come and go, and each yeah. one is the cure, the thing, the answer. Mm -hmm. when, when are people going to grow up? I don't understand it. Yeah. 
and, uh, and learn that NyQuil's really the only <laughs> thing that works. The only cure-all <laughs> remedy to everything. It's, it's true. People, you, you get all this, uh, you know, this holistic crap and uh, take this and uh, rub the magnet there. But uh, you know what? A couple shots of NyQuil, uh, that does it. The one time I took NyQuil, I was wired all night. Really? So I don't know. Yeah, I can do yeah. that too. Yeah, when well, you take too much, right? Mm. I'm a I'm a know. pro with I took it once. I stayed upstairs at the ceiling all night, so I never took well, it. There, isn't it. there a reaction where sometimes people yes. go 180 yes. degrees? Yes. Well, that happened to but me on particularly with, I stay away from that yeah, stuff. These antihistamines and things, especially. It's sort of like uh, the way they handle kids with attention deficit disorders. They give them speed. Right. Yes. Which is kind of weird to me. What's the logic behind that, though? Why does that work? Nobody knows. They just the theories, but it works. Yeah, it's like uh, putting out an oil well fire by blowing it up. Did you see something. that movie? The Hellfighters with John Wayne. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> One of the greatest movies ever. Yeah, John, John Wayne played, uh, he played uh, Red Adair, I think. The uh, famous Texas uh, oil well. Yeah. Fire. And they were right in the guy. middle of a battle zone, and the planes came in and blew up the wells, and they had to blow them oh, up. Oh, it's awesome. Hellfighters. Amazing movie. It must have been like early 70s, late 60s, something like that. <laughs> John? Yeah, how's it going, guys? Good, you're 17, you're on the Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, I wanted to ask Goo Goo Dolls how they got that gig with uh, that movie City Angels. Um, and what's the name of the song, too? I forgot it, man, but it's been in my head for like two weeks straight now. Oh, cool. That's, uh, well, the subliminal messages are working. <laughs> that stuff does work. Uh, I don't, the, the, the guy that made the movie called my manager and asked if... He had, he heard the song name, which was another ballad that got big, mm -hmm. and um, he heard it, and, they, and he said, you know, this guy writes these sappy songs like this, and I'm making this movie, so you think maybe he could write one for it? So and the song didn't exist before. It, I mean, it was commissioned, basically. Yeah, yeah. They said, you know, write a song for this movie. Yeah, so. You guys put Titanic to shame, man. What's that one think, song, man? it was great. And and how much? I don't uh, got the Celine Dion clout, though, you know? I can't afford 12 producers. <laughs> how many, uh, how much do you know about the movie going into writing the song? Well, I, I, I knew it was a remake of Wings of Desire, so I was a little bit iffy about doing it, because that was a really great movie. But then they, they flew me out here, and they, they took me to a little screening room and showed me the movie. Uh, without the music in it, and I kind of watched the story and then just grabbed onto it. And uh, oh, so the movie was was complete. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, it mostly complete, I think. And then um, <clears throat> and then I went back to my whole hotel and wrote the song. Hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if you guys could do the soundtrack for Hellfighters, too? Yeah, Hellfighters too. <laughs> the, the, awesome. the Persian Gulf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> be like yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme is ready to <laughs> Oh, that'd be awesome. That would rock. Quentin. Yes. You're 19. I am. What's going on? Okay, here's the uh, situation. Um, I came out of the closet about a year ago uh, in October, and after coming to college for a couple months, and, uh, you know, I, I, have, I just had a new guide dog, and we're getting things, you know, to go all, all over the place pretty well. And I had a couple crushes on a couple guys or whatever, no big deal. Or a uh, guide dog? Yes, uh, seeing eye dog. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm like this gay blind guy. <laughs> wow. Um, so, the thing is, um, you know, I... I went through high school and... I think if you could see, you'd be into chicks. <laughs> that's that's, that's really what a lot of guys You me. should see them when they're naked. It's spectacular. <laughs> well, see, I'm not totally blind, so I've seen that before. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't do anything for What's me. What's the nature of your eye yeah, problem? It's too fuzzy, though. I yeah, had, well, I had close. congenital cataracts okay. as a baby and then uh, glaucoma okay. developed later. Right. So anyway, uh, I I've, uh, went through high school dating girls and trying to you know get familiar and that just didn't do it for me and so now when I came out of the closet I felt like set back five or six years in the whole dating ring you know and uh, now I've got this this thing that I think is a crush or something more on a guy that I I can't seem to figure out how to land because well number one he's got a long distance relationship with a guy um, halfway across the state. And, you know, I thought that would end pretty quickly. But, you know, I, I've i gotten to be pretty good friends with him. We hang out, we have fun and laugh and everything, but I can't do anything more than that. I just don't know, you know, what I'm doing wrong or what. All right, all right. Uh, Quentin? Yeah. Is that your name, Quentin? That's my name. 
I don't take this the wrong way, but no, do you think your parents knew you were going to be gay, or did you? Do you think the name made him gay? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's talk about it after the break, all right? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like, hear you. Uh, if they named him Stu. <laughs> Quinn, hang on. We're going to have to go to break right? here, okay? That's so hold on. We'll right. talk more with you after <laughs> this. Love line. Adam Carolla. Of the zone. Oh, wow. 105. Yeah. Hey. It's uh, the Goo Goo Dolls. It's the love line, and uh, we're going to take our little traditional 10-second uh, top of the hour break, and we'll be right back with more Love Line. This is Love Line on Radio Station. Zone. 105. KZNR Lakeville. KZNT Cambridge. KZNC Eden Prairie. Alternative Alternative Radio. Zone 105. All right. Uh, Dizzy Up the Girls, the name of the CD. Goo Goo Dolls is the name of the band, and uh, they're going to hang out very uh, graciously for one more break here on uh, the love line quentin yes sir okay so you're blind yep and you're 19 yep and you're gay and i'm also mexican wow you, nice. you could probably get a scholarship to any college in in in, in this country and like, dude i'm on it i've got all that we, you just we, played the accordion i got like no, a hundred trombone I got, there you go i got 185 on my sat you're in you're in the harvard <laughs> you can be a fireman tomorrow if you want, <laughs> if, you, if you're in uh, Los Angeles. All right, so, uh, boy, hey, Quentin. Yeah. You got, now, see, Quentin, let me, uh, let me give you a I compliment know, I, here. I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. There's a lot of callers that we have uh, mm -hmm. on this show, younger callers who are gay or, or lesbian, and you get the feeling they were forced into it right. because or there's ambivalence some, or some uncle or, yeah. after around with them a little too much when they were young and they kind of tweaked their antenna a little bit. And oh, now, you mean that's why they turned gay? Well, no, it's just it's just you get a we don't know, but that that we always get a funny feeling. But Quentin is gay, gay, right? You're just gay, <laughs> and, and it's 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 obvious to us that you don't have all that other stuff going on. You cut Quentin, he bleeds gay. It did, and you started saying <laughs> you you. Right. When you Wait, you started your diatribe? I know exactly what you're going to say, because that's the exact right. reaction sounds, I had to it. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Sounds uh, healthy and adjusted, and it wasn't, you weren't created in the lab or in the basement, <laughs> as it were, like a lot of our listeners. This is just what, this, you're, you like guys. <laughs> exactly. And we're never going to try to talk you out of that. Well, appreciate that. Is the behind still intact, though? <laughs> 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 I, I always have to ask. Oh yeah, oh, it, yeah. it is. We're doing well. Is it one piece? I yeah. Mean, okay, because yeah. it's weird. A lot of gay guys don't get into that aspect of uh, the physicality. It's an oral thing or something, or oh. they're they're supplying it. It's just hanging out with the boys. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I not that I don't enjoy physical contact or anything. It's just. I, I would hope that I, you know, could appreciate something a little more, um, uh, less tangible, you know, about the person rather than just their body. Okay. Right. And so you're into this one guy. Right, right. And he, he, has he given you any signals to lead you to believe that he, is he gay? Oh, yeah, he's, he's gay. And he's given you signals? And he's got a boyfriend who's across, uh, town, or across, across the, the country. Yeah. Right. We worry about mm, you getting involved with all that. Right. Uh huh. I mean, you're you're setting yourself up to be majorly let down. Yeah. How old is the guy? He's uh, 18. And he, he how how long has he had this relationship with the other guy? Just since like the middle of the summer, you know. I mean, and mm -hmm. and from what I can ascertain, it's a, a very physical relationship. Funny, mm -hmm. the gay guy says ascertain. <laughs> <laughs> See, Quentin, you got such a good sense of humor about it. I'm just uh, going off there. Uh, it's not any different than any of That sounds like a friend. good rental, ass. Or tame. <laughs> All right, hey, Quentin, but you, you're, with your seeing condition, you can't watch uh, the gay you, porn, right? That, that's the whole thing. You know, oh, with my seeing condition, it, it, well, okay, you bring up a good point, though. You know, with my condition, it's harder for me to pick out, you know, guys that might seem, through, you know, attractive or, or even remotely... Uh, approachable from mm -hmm. a distance. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. And so I have to rely a lot on hearsay and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, what what I mean is is well, let me let me see if this is what you're saying. Can you 
can you think most gay men can kind of see another gay man by oh gaydar the yeah. way well part of it's the way he dresses the way he carries himself i mean there's a physicality the there gay, our gay callers tell us that it's a look eye to eye thing some kind uh, of eye, the gaydar right, is in the i eye. hear a lot about that too yeah. but of course that's not possible right for you for, for me yeah. right right you have to rely on other instincts anyway let's stay with this guy uh what about just being just direct with them just speaking up well see i thought about that and uh i mean a lot of people would think that's not a good idea because then you're jeopardizing any sort of friendship or not really subsequent. not really not if you, you, you potentially i mean there's some risk in it but if you at least couch it in uh a, a expression of how much the friendship means to you and that you you know you're not going to sacrifice the friendship but you're having these feelings you just need to talk about them sacrifice <laughs> sack <laughs> you know you really are pathetic <laughs> Pat. <laughs> ascertain and sacrifice that's funny bro. that's a good one all right well uh, listen i don't he should just be straight out with the guy and see see if he's interested but don't date the guy if he's dating the guy across town and get into that sort of uh triangle, threesome triangle, mess yeah, because yeah. uh that that's going to be trouble and quentin sounds like a good guy yep and he should find somebody who treats him right. Yep. That, that is my wish for him. Tracy. Hi. Hey, you're 18. Yes, I'm 18. I haven't had a date in almost a year, and I don't know why. I'm gorgeous, 100%, wonderful, all-American girl, but um, I don't know why. Are guy, the guys not approach you? No. Are, are you kidding? I have to take side streets home so they don't follow me to my house. But they don't ask you out. No, they don't. They're, like, intimidated or something. Well, here's our drummer's phone number. <laughs> He's not afraid of anyone. Are you in high school still? No, I'm not. In college? Yes. Junior college? No. Mm. South State. Yeah. Tell us. I want to junior college. Uh, you're at Northridge? No. Long Beach. Oh, no. Long Beach? No. Dominguez Hills? Fullerton. Fullerton. Oh, True, it's like you have some sort of clairvoyant powers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a Kreskin over there. All right, uh, you're too good looking. Uh, guys follow you around, but they won't ask you out. See, there's something fishy here because that's sort of... Uh, um, well, there is such a thing. We just never I mean, spoken to that person. I know, so Maybe but we finally talk to her. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't... What do you think would be so intimidating about you, Tracy? Specifically, I don't know. the way I look, the way I act, I guess. Which is what? Well, I don't know. I'm five six, blonde hair, blue eyes, got you know, all the right things in all the right places. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a great attitude. Not to sound conceited or anything, but mm -hmm. they just they're intimidated. They don't come up to me. And Hold on, let me talk to the, the guys here while you're on hold here. <laughs> Is she meeting anybody else? Is she? No. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, she sounds like uh, her cup is uh, her cup is full, just uh, based based on what she's saying about herself. See, uh, it's all right for other people to sort of speculate you're too good looking, uh, and that's why. But when you do too much of it yourself, there's something that smacks of something wrong here. Mm, not insane, and I'm not <laughs> doubting that she's good looking, <laughs> but there's a little. She's she's harping on the looks a little too much. I mean, doesn't it sort of feel mm. it sort of feel that way a little, a little bit? Narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but there's a lot of that out there. Why would this one repel people? I don't think it's that though. I mean, I have no idea. Weren't stopped. you a little repelled by her? A little bit. Yeah, but, uh, it's okay. It's just <laughs> us. <laughs> no, I, I, but but most guys though, when they get around, uh, you know, a, a girl that really is attractive, th they excuse a lot, and. Uh, you know what I mean? They would yeah. at least... But, yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, guys... We just have the radio here that we're dealing with, and so we get, we get just her persona, we're like, ooh, mm, something there, maybe... Right, we'll... But if she's super hot, you'll accept that. Well, some guy, you know, absolutely. a lot of Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, that, that's how guys are. They, they judge, they do it on a scale. That's why Cindy Crawford's so, so, so she's a genius. She's so smart. I mean, I've talked to Cindy Crawford before. She's nice. 
but she's she's not. <laughs> be, believe me, Janet Reno is smarter than Cindy Crawford. But people don't say Janet Reno. She's she's a genius. <laughs> no, they don't say that about they don't say that about women that are unattractive because you sort of do it on a scale right. uh, on a curve. Right. There's there's the there's the. Uh, it, it's the same with the niceness thing. People the, will go like, oh, that you know whoever the model is or whoever the mm -hmm. actress is, it's beautiful. Like, she is so. Nice, but really, what they're saying is, she's is not a pain in the ass. Chick who is so hot, right. she's not a pain in the ass. Right. But you know what? There, there are girls that I, I won't even consider talking to. There, you know, because you're just like, no way. She'd never even, be she'd never even look at me. So. Oh, because and, and that's she's that. And that's what Tracy's saying. That's a her. I think, her but I don't know if that's happening in mass. You know, like a whole no, town is afraid to ask her. No, out. believe Cause, me. Because some guy will always come up and yeah. ask anybody out. Right. Like, we know a guy who's gonna who will ask any girl out. He no fear of rejection. No fear. He casts his net wide across the water, and he does really well. Yeah. Because that's... he has no fear of rejection. He will ask a hundred girls out, and three of them will go out with them. So he's happy. Yeah, I like that uh, that uh, tuna net theory where the guys just throw it off the back of the ship, and just drag it. Sometimes Trawling. they get like starfish and particles and stuff, but you know, it's the price you pay. Occasionally, there's that tuna. <laughs> it's straying too close to the surface. You know? uh, all right, well, let's see what we got. Was this uh, Tracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Tracy, we're sort of ruling out that you're too good looking because it, uh, let's just say. You're absolutely phenomenal looking. There's nobody better looking uh, than you at, at the college you're going to. If your attitude was accommodating, there'd, there'd be guys even, lining up to ask you. Even if it wasn't you. accommodating, so that's the point. Maybe she's not quite as good looking as she thinks that she is. But oh. that's not going to stop guys but, either. But that's all relative, though, right? I mean, we're trying to figure this out, Tracy. And we don't mean to be talking about Tracy, why don't you come down here? Can and you we'll do that? Tell you. We'll tell you whether you're telling the truth. How far or not. away are you? She's in Fullerton. Yeah, it's not that far, is it? Orange County. You could get here by the by the end of the show. <laughs> Let's do that, Tracy. Okay. Why don't you I, hop I in that uh, Barbie Corvette you drive? <laughs> hey, come on down here and let me have a good look at you. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can do that. All, All right. right, and we'll give you direction. Let's do that. We'll okay. put you on hold. Okay. Hey, and don't screw with me, Tracy. No, Come down here. Perfect. And I'm going to primp a little bit. Okay. Go, oh. go take the uh, French horse shower in the bathroom, right? <laughs> or wet down the paper towels and wipe my groin and stuff like that. <laughs> Maybe the first time water touched your body in about two weeks. Wait a minute. No, I, um, I recently took a new job, and I've been with this. Uh, fiance uh, you can say for five years we have a two and a half year old daughter um i'm home only every other night she said that before i took the job i wasn't meeting her emotional needs what are you um, doing that you're only home every other night uh transportation you drive truck uh, well no i don't want to say all right um, and and before that though you still weren't meeting her needs her emotional needs yeah. can you be specific with how that was or what the problem was well, I wasn't romantic enough, or I wasn't this, or I wasn't that, or I was too tired. I was working three jobs, going to college, trying to support our new baby. And All right, fine. Just nothing was never enough, you know. Um, so then she gets this boyfriend, and and I catch her, you know, red-handed. On Valentine's Day, he's in my apartment. When I come home from work, I throw him out. Uh, she says it's over. Three weeks later, I catch her seeing him again. She swears it's over, that, you know, I'm hurt and all this and that. And I say, what do you want? What would back? happen if you married your girlfriend? I'm not suggesting that's a solution, but I'm just wondering if this is Well, I've, I've asked her to marry me. She, oh, she's she's like, well, we can't this year because of, it's oh, better so for that, single. That's not the deal with her. Okay. Right. And what about um, the kid? I mean, doesn't she have concerns about stability and uh, the healthy environment for your child? Well, ev evidently this guy's a, a sugar daddy, so to speak. I mean, he uh, must be offering to take care of her. Um, he's older than I am. Yeah, but taking care of somebody financially does not take care of, as she's pointing out to you over and over again, one's emotional needs, and certainly not the needs of a child. That's, uh, Drew, ha uh, Drew has uh, three au pairs, by the way. Just uh, keep that in context. <laughs> Jeff, mm -hmm. uh, it, it sort of sounds like this thing's over, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, she, yeah. she keeps she's <laughs> she's carrying on with a with another guy. Well, here's what she said last. I moved out a week ago, and she says, "Well, here's my intentions. 
if somebody's fizzled out with me and him, he's older, I know it'll never work, and it's not right for me to do this because you're her father and I want you to be around her. And uh, she gives it, here's my plan. I wanted to just uh, let it go on for a couple more weeks, let it fizzle out, and you see what you lost by moving out, and then you move back in. I said, see what I lost? I didn't lose anything. You're the one continuing with them. I'm, uh... He's playing me. I mean, I don't know what to do. My daughter's the one that's going to be, I keep telling her, my daughter's going to be the one that's going to be hurt, not me or you. Oh, God. And if, uh, listen, if I know, uh, one thing I've learned from this show is you got to keep an eye on that daughter now. Because uh, she'll be in the same role As 18 mom. years from now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Playing guys, doing that whole, that whole, you know, who's daddy this week thing. <sighs> Jeff, exactly. this uh, girlfriend or fiancé of yours sounds sort of flawed. I mean, she's got a daughter, uh, she's got you, she's saying uh, give it another few weeks to fizzle out. I mean, she doesn't, uh, she's either, like, she's really acting out, yeah. and, she, uh, and she's mad at you. How old is she? She's 25. Mm. Has she been through a lot in her life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah foster parents moved around mm -hmm. from here okay. there. Right, right, or... right. And, and just going to, how old's your daughter? Two and a half. Just yep. going to get right back on yeah. that horse. Just, just uh, drag gotta her keep through it, that. Got to keep it going. Uh, I come from, you know, this incredible instability, foster parents, uh, God knows what uh, the, the uncle or the stepdad <laughs> did to me, whatever. Now I'm going to have a daughter. I'm going to have chaos. I'm going to have a bunch of guys circulating in and out of there and no stability so that she can do the exact same thing 15 18 years from now so what should i do go back and put up with it for my daughter well i don't think i don't think you should have a relationship with her i think you should have a relationship with your daughter mm -hmm. i mean oh, god uh, yeah but true the the this woman sounds but chaotic and, and i know but jeff that's... may not uh Jeff, don't take this the wrong way, but it, Jeff may not be uh, the world's uh, hey, greatest uh, boyfriend either. That's true, but he's got all his sort of uh, ducks in the right place. You know what I mean? He wants to do the right thing. Yeah, but I'd like to hear her version of how he yeah. is. Oh, no, listen, he's involved with her, so that says a lot right there. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, yeah, but, exactly. But, boy, I mean, you need to take somebody like his girlfriend and... and put her in a parent class and contain her behaviors and have Jeff around a bunch. I mean, that's what needs to happen. Uh, I agree with Adam. The relationship <laughs> you would have with her sort of uh, mood at this it, point. That is, uh, to me, that sounds like the ultimate nightmare. You, you start a relationship with somebody and you have a child. They have custody of the child. And to, to sit home and think about who what that child is seeing, who's being paraded in front of the child. Are these guys uh, being sexually or physically abusive? Are they doing drugs? Uh, what kind of fights are going on? I mean, and you're across town in your one-bedroom apartment. You get to see them every other weekend. But you know they're staying in the same place as uh, the guy who's pulling up on the hog and he's drunk. I mean, could you... Mm. what? kind of torture i mean it, it's you who got yourself into that position ultimately but still your heart's got to go out to guys like jeff who don't really have any control or e even much say over what's going to go on like three generations for the kind of crap that happened to jeff's girlfriend to wash out of the population yeah you know what i mean right jeff can only do so much Right, and then that kid's going to be you know a little bit better off because of having had jeff in his, her life right but still be a little bit of mom there right all right so appeal to her on behalf of your daughter yeah to stop acting out yeah. and to parenting uh, classes do they have one of parenting oh, yes. classes yes they do oh yes where like the why uh, <laughs> where they have well parenting i mean the, the their through hospitals through uh, uh private organizations well what do they teach you how, how what kids need P K P K you, you know from listening to this from talking to the, our, our college kids People have no idea what a child needs. None. You know what I'm. You know what I'm going to do when I'm in power. I'm going to have uh, parenting classes, and it's just going to be a big sting operation. I'm going to arrest everyone who shows up. <laughs> and I say, listen, anybody's got to go to school to learn how to change a diaper or feed some kids, some babies, some strained peas. You're going in the jug. 
<laughs> you know what I'm going to do when I'm in power? If, uh, I'm going to do that with parenting classes, and then I'm going to have um, I'm going to have cockfighting night at the Coliseum, and everyone who shows up, I'm going to arrest. <laughs> to on these funny. huge sting, uh, these big sting operations. You imagine how much safer the streets would be if I said free cockfighting night at the Coliseum. About 90 hoodlums showed up, and I just threw a net over the whole place. The tuna net again. Picked it up that big uh, C-130 transport plane and we'll drop it uh, somewhere out in the Pacific. It's pretty funny. I wish you could have seen that. You didn't notice the Goo Goo Dolls music said, uh, I'm going to be in power. They, they, yes? Oh, when you're, when you're in yeah. power, Adam? Uh, you guys will be the official band. <laughs> I'll, uh, right. Thanks. Uh, I'll vote for you. We're we're attentive. The we're attentive inauguration band. ball. we got to say goodbye to them. All right. Bye. Thanks a lot for having us. Hey, we'll tell you, uh, hopefully, uh, young, nubile, uh, tight-ass Tracy will show up here in the next 20, right 25 over. minutes. And then when yeah. we see you guys tomorrow at the TV, we'll give you a full, uh, a full accounting yeah. of what she looks like. And if like. she's really hot, can she come? Yeah, we'll bring her in. I'll just wake her up tomorrow. Come on, baby, we got to do the TV show. <laughs> Dizzy Up the Girls, the name of the CD. Goo Goo Dolls, the name of the band. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks we for having appreciate Thank it. You. We'll see you tomorrow. Love line. That's what we're doing here. Goo Goo Dolls have uh, just left the studio. I'm trying to think of the name of a uh, man, classy lady. There you go, man. Producer Ann. Produce it, baby. And hopefully, uh, young uh, 18-year-old Tracy is good look too good looking to get dates. I said that was my problem in uh, high school. That must be it. That's the explanation. I intimidated the ladies. Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's why they turned and ran when you came up to them. Yeah. You are scared S-less. Yeah, to me, it's like saying, and this is a call, alluding to a call that we had uh, about 10 minutes ago, who says she's coming down here. She basically, Tracy's 18, and she, basically her hypothesis uh, as far as why she can't get a date is that she's just too damn good looking. And it's a little, to me, like saying, I'm selling a car, and it's too cheap, and people are... They're scared. They're suspicious. They don't believe it. I mean, it's sort of the same logic, and it doesn't really work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people go, oh, it must have been stolen or totaled. Or there's got to be something wrong with it. But you know what? You're still going to sell the car the first weekend. That's right. Believe me. Uh, take a 96 Porsche, ask five grand for it. It'll sell. It'll sell. No matter what. Yeah. And it, 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 you, you, can make, an you can make the argument all day long that, oh, yeah, but people thought it was totaled or stolen or repossessed or something, something, something. And uh, I'll believe it, but still sell it. And that's uh, my argument with too good looking to date. Yeah, uh, guys are intimidated. Yeah, this, yeah, that. But you know what? You're still going out. Suzanne. Yes. You're 31. Yes, I am. And Drew, every chick you went to high school with who was really hot, Claimed to have that problem. She, she dated. Didn't yeah, she? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's going on there, Suzanne? Well, I just sort of, I was listening to you in my car on the way home, and uh, first of all, you guys are killing me. Nowhere else can you listen to the radio and hear Pull Up on My Hog. And uh, what was the other thing you said? Pull Up on My Hog. <laughs> you pull Up on Your Hog, and then you said something else, and now I can't oh, remember because I've been playing solitaire for too long. That's horrible. <laughs> but, uh, Where, but, yeah, you guys are killing me. Where are you at? I'm in Oakland. No, you can't drive over here, can you? <laughs> I don't think I can drive uh, over there, okay. frankly, no. Uh, I might be able to fly, but I think uh, the airport's closed. Right but now. you can, it says on the screen, you can uh, relate to Tracy? Not in the sense that I think I'm too good looking. I mean, I'm definitely not too good looking. I don't think, I mean, as you say, no one can be too good looking. <laughs> not really, for but, not for dates. You yeah, can be too. No. But she so, probably, like, really doesn't give off this vibe <laughs> that she wants to meet someone. Um, right. You know, it's possible that maybe that's where she's losing out. Well, listen, all dating is the vibe that you're giving off. That's right, because I've seen you on TV, and y you're, like, not too good looking. <laughs> no, seriously, no, no offense. <laughs> no offense oh, to hey, you. Hey, no, none taken. None taken. you are a total babe. <gasps> huh? But you're not very good looking You're a complete and utter babe. Really? But you're not too good looking. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? That means that, you know, like, in your personality and, and your um, humor, nah, you, yeah. you just... The, the you PR, the, your personal rating system. 
By the yeah, way, are, I, I, are, are we supposed to talk about our book or not? I don't know. We'll go ahead and give it a plug. About what your what? Oh, your book. We wrote a book. And in there we talk. Adam dreamt up a rating system that uh, speaks to what you're talking about. And actually, there's some, some kernel of truth in this little system. And that you measure people more than just their parents, basically. Yeah, see, I think women more so than men. You absolutely, absolutely. Oh yes, it's absolutely. all chronicled. That's all in the, the in the system, right? In the yeah. personal rating system. Yeah. Uh, I like. I always thought of my, you know, personality as a bit of a detriment. But, no, uh, no. Well, yeah, no. your sense of humor though uh, prevails, I guess, in this case. See, Drew is right. better looking. His personality used to be a detriment. <laughs> However, in the years that you've been on this show, his personality has improved <laughs> immensely. I'm I'm mad at you now. Sister. I'm sorry. All right, babe. It's still See, I remember PRS. when Poor Man was on the radio, and that well, was a long that, ass time you, ago. So you must have lived. And Drew was a big drip then. You must have lived down here. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've brought Drew's personality out. It just needed a, a little fertilizer, a little water, and a, a little beating. <laughs> a little abuse. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the look thing is. See, here's the thing I've uh, figured out about us. I don't give it too much thought. You and but I. Yeah. You and I look totally different. Than we're supposed to look. No. Oh, than each other. I see. Than each other. I, see. I mean, they're like two extreme. And, and different than we're supposed to look based on our radio perceptions. Right. Yeah. But I think our types are very different. Yes, yes. And uh, I've never really, uh, we've never found a woman who's into both of us. No. Really, because it's too, it's too, different. too diverse. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Okay. Yes. But I think we're both fine examples of our, of our, type. uh, of, of our types, aren't we? Archetypes. <laughs> All right. Fine examples. Bitch. I don't need that personality crap. Oh, boy. Please, I'm not bad looking. Check out the personal rating system. Huh? Tony, you're 25. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Good. Uh, well, my And problem... listen, let me tell you something. Hold on a second. <laughs> All these other comedians out there, they're trolls. You know, you, you see, uh, you know, the Bill Mars, uh -oh, doing the show Monday. So I'm Monday this week, yeah. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey, these guys, there's these guys, they, first off, all these other comedians, they go about 5'8", and when you see them in person, they got, they're more nose than they are shoulder. At least with me, I'm, you know, normal size and everything. You know, you, you, you all right. Uh, Tony. Yes. You're 25. Yes, I am. Going on. I had a dream Anne was in a porn movie last oh. night with Diane Farr from oh. the TV show, and I was going nuts. Oh. What do you mean going nuts? I, I what? had... What? All right, hold on a second, Tony. I had just, like, one of the most vivid sexual dreams I'd had in a long time Did you look at me last differently night. today? He's been treating you differently. I noticed no, that. Sir, it's, no, sir. No, no. You know it, when you dream about something, then the yeah. next day you act different towards them yeah. because it's weird. Yeah. Because you it, just had like great sex with that person the night before, and they <laughs> right. don't know it. it. You know they don't know it, but you think maybe there's a little part of them that probably <laughs> does. They came you know? and visited. Yeah. It, no. Here's. See, that was last night. If I'd seen you in the morning or sometime before noon, I think there would have been something going on. And here's the thing that was interesting about this dream. Diane Farr from the TV show was in it, and producer Ann was in it. And it was like a ex very explicit porn film that they had done and that they were sort of uh, proud of. And they were, you know, getting it on together, and there was like five guys in it with them and everything. And I, like, sort of came into the room while they were, like, kind of airing it or something. And... I sort of pretended like I didn't want to see it, but I did want to see it or something. But I somehow, I sort of missed it. And the movie, and some, I had like some still shots from the movie and stuff, and it was floating around this movie, and I was just dying to get my hands on it. I just, I was dying to see it. And I sort of had to pretend like I wasn't that interested in seeing it, though, but I was still looking all over the house for it and trying to sort of hint around. And, uh, and, and I wanted to see it without acting like I wanted to see it. But here's the thing that was uh, interesting about uh, producer Ann's role. <laughs> uh, Diane Farr was Diane Farr. Uh, looked exactly like Diane, and, and, and it was her. 
Producer Ann was not quite Producer Ann, although I knew it was Producer Ann. Do you know when you have dreams when somebody is somebody, but they don't necessarily look exactly like them or right. even sound like them? It's just them? Right. I don't quite know how that works. What did I look like? You look more like a porn star, I would say, uh -huh. and less like you. <laughs> Which I don't mean in I don't mean in a bad way, but uh, plain. Well, what I'm saying is you don't look like a porn star. No, no, I mean you were dolled up, and and and, and I can't remember exactly what you looked like, but it was you. Uh, I knew it was you, and I don't know how, when dreams do that. I don't know what the point of that is because. Lord knows I've seen you enough. If I want to put you in a dream, I could just I, put I think, you in. I think it's a piece of the person you, you, you throw in there. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. And your dreams are so GD transparent. It's just hysterical. But go ahead. But, but here's the thing. I don't have I don't have the hots for Diane Farr no. or Anne. No. I, I think they're both attractive women. But... I, I, I've never been uh, attracted to them that way. I mean, partly because, I, you know, there's no shot. But I, 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 it, I don't think that way. I don't go to bed thinking of, uh, I've, you know, Diane is a beautiful woman, but I've never thought about her that way at all. But yet there was a producer, Ann and Diane, and they're like getting it on and they're doing you stuff. And I was really some... sexed up about it. Yeah. I was like, I was going nuts. I wanted to see it. And I was, you know, and I, you know. I was really going. You know, going was this last sick. night? Yeah, last we had night. some really explicit discussions with Leah last night. Do you remember that? Oh, and, maybe that and, got and me you, fired and up. And you, yeah, and you had had some similar. And, and funny when we were having that discussion, I thought to myself, "Boy, we've gone, we've gotten into this material awfully easily these days." And we had a similar discussion with Diane on Sun on last week. We I did. Thought, I can't remember what it was. Off or where the it was, air? Yeah, there was some discussion that I thought, "Ooh, this is kind of." And maybe yeah. it was like a cross between Anne and Leah and Rioni. Yeah, there you go. Leah is uh, this real slender blonde who is not a porn star either, but there's a couple elements there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, she's she's skinny, she's blonde, and she wears high boots. I you think know? that's what did it. And then and then you some some part of you remember that discussion with Diane last week. Wow, I think you're a sick bastard. I'll tell you, man. When I was pumped up, I was I was like uh, I almost I popped right through that pad on the on the mattress. I was sleeping on my stomach and I threw myself right off the bed with my penis. You're my stern but groovy master. Like Adam. Speed Racer's car would jump, you know, when those things came out of the bottom. That's what happened. I landed on the floor. I was so pumped up. <laughs> I wanted to see this movie so badly. Jeez. It's not like I didn't relieve myself before I went to bed, either. Could you imagine if I didn't do that? Thank God I did that. Well, anyway, I don't know what the hell's going on in my head, but I've just been really uh, beaked up lately. All right, who are we talking to? Tony? What are yeah, we talking to, Tony? To Tony? Yeah. Adam, you truly are a disturbed person. Oh, you're 25. I'm telling you, Diane, far from the TV show, had two penises in each <laughs> hand. It was like going back and forth on each one of them. Oh. I'll be sure to tell Diane about that. And I had like still photos, and I was going nuts. And Ann and Ann was like, on top "All right, all right, all right." With... Tony, what's going on? Wow. Uh, well, I've got a, a problem that's kind of been uh, up and coming for a while. Uh, I've been seeing a, a girl for about a year and a half now, and uh, about six months ago, I think we both knew things weren't really going to work out, and I tried to break up with her, and uh, she got very upset and uh, called me up for weeks after that and started to threaten suicide and as a consequence of that I got back together with her and uh, I guess my question is uh, I don't know where to go from here because it's it's kind of coming to that point again where yeah, this is suicide threat is not going to sustain a relationship no um, you have to deal with reality on reality's terms and so does she and your reality is your feelings have changed you need to move on and you have to move on you need to be empathic you need to be considerate you need to create structure for her you need to take her threats very seriously but you can't be totally responsible and you can't stay in a relationship that's a sham you can't do it and uh, honest to God I, I, I advise people if somebody's threatening suicide Take their threats absolutely at uh, face value and uh, call the police. 
and take appropriate steps each and every time they make that threat. And eventually, either the system will pick them up and make sure they get the treatment they need, or they will stop making those threats. You know, I wish I could get my dreams on a video. Oh, for crying out loud. So I could watch them. You know, I could watch them. Well, we all wish, too. It would be quite a a thing. Oh, that would be huge. You being uh, smacked by your own testicles by your mom and grandmother. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily watch that one again. (laughs) Yeah, that one, uh, that one would go in the heat. Yeah, award winner. Oh, could you imagine? How humiliating would it be to sit there and watch your dream? Pictures of, you'd be walking around, your biceps, you know, bulging out, uh, cycling shorts uh, filled to the brim. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I was thinking, uh, you know, with the way technology is going, all this virtual reality business and all this morphing and stuff like you know five years ago ten years ago when you wanted to put someone else's head on someone else's body you could always tell i mean it looked like a cut and paste yeah uh now they're getting pretty good and here's my uh, i mean you're going to be able to get like pornography where i could just get a picture of diane and a picture of ann and just go ahead and work you know work it in work it in yeah I could probably learn to enjoy that. <laughs> oh, my God. Will you cut? Let's, go, let's go to break. That'd be great. Break, 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 break. Okay. All right. We'll be back. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Adam Carolla. This is Dr. Drew. Stay tuned for more Love Line on The Zone 105. This is Adam Carolla. And this is Dr. Drew. We're smack in the middle of The Zone. Oh, wow. 105. Hey there, Love Line. Uh, that uh, Tracy better... It's probably primping. Putting on some rouge. Hey, you look a little bit more uh, better kempt. I went in the bathroom and cleaned up a little bit. Yeah. I was playing basketball before I came out here. Yeah. And you know, uh, I got a real sweat going. So yeah. I, you know, I wasn't really, like, I tried to clean up a little. You're worried about the smell? I had a little oil on my skin. You know, so I was it, might, it might be a smell. No, no, not, not, no, no smell. It's hard for me to believe that you'd be concerned about the smell since you've been sitting here with your leg up, farting the entire <laughs> commercial break, Please. filling the room with a lovely odor. Anyone who listens to this show knows that's a lie. Okay. Uh, it's just cleaning up. You know, my eyebrows will get messy. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got a lot of brow. Holly. Yes. You're 28. Yes. What's going on? Really simple question, not very exciting. What is the strongest muscle in the body? <laughs> That's the sphincter. <laughs> That's what I thought. I see. Really? I thought the sphincter is a heart. Oh, my I'm ass told... just cast a vote for that one. I've uh, been told that I'm incorrect. The heart is certainly <laughs> the most able to uh, sustain endurance. I mean, it never stops. Right. But it's a different kind of muscle. You're talking about skeletal muscle. Okay. Uh, and then you got to ask, uh, what is the question? I mean, what muscle can lift the most weight across a joint? What muscle, you know what I mean? It's, it, you're not asking a question that can be really answered. I mean, there is not like one muscle that's the strongest in the body? Mm, the, there are muscle groups that lift more weight, like the quadriceps. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. And your in your thighs. And yeah, that's probably your biggest muscle. Yeah, but it, you know that's that's a group of muscles. Right. So there okay. might be a hip stabilizer might actually be a stronger muscle because it has to constantly be there stabilizing the hip. Okay, so like the hip or the thighs. So yeah, I guess for um for lifting purposes, what would be the strongest? Weightlifting. Quadricep. Quadricep. Lusting, you, uh, lifting generally. Certainly, it lifts the most weight and uses the most energy. I'd say quadricep. Quadricep. That's the front of your leg. Yeah. The thigh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But but again, you're what, asking what, a question what, that's not really particularly answerable. What was your question? What was your um, guess? The heart. That was that, my. That's first cardiac well, muscle. Sphincter, actually, sphincter was the first thing that came to my mind, and then I thought heart. It depends what you mean by strong, and heart is not skeletal muscle. So. Okay, yeah, I get the the way that it was posed to me by the person was um, like lifting. All right, hey, Tyler, you're 28. That's enough of this kind of and hypothetical what's your point? muscle talk. 
you, you're, you're almost as retarded as the time I, uh, I was on like a hour train ride with my buddy, and we almost got in a fist fight over whether someone could live off uh, churros and tap water <laughs> for two years. Glad no, I'm not the only one you get in those fights with. I love getting into just uh, hypothetical yeah. arguments oh, yes, with you people. Do. I said absolutely people could live off a of churro and tap water for a couple of years. Yeah. Mm. I think it was just a year, actually. They could do it for a year. But you they said you'd, you'd get die. Them. But you might die five years later from some sort of kidney problem or something or liver problem or something. I mean, something. you get vitamin deficiencies eventually. That's a swear to God, there's and, uh... people who live off of that, though, in this town especially. <laughs> You know what I mean, I mean, I worked with fat guys that just uh, lived off of, uh, you know, tortillas and beer. Yeah, I, I swear to God, mm -hmm. churro, yeah, churro and tap water. Uh, churro is like a donut that somebody straightened out. Uh, for those of you who aren't from uh, the Los Angeles area, well, Daisy my kids just discovered churros too. Twenty-five. They, they think you can only get them at the zoo, and I'm letting them Good. keep that. Let them think that, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my uh, my uh, Catholic little brother Nate, when we went to the Rose Bowl one year, he ate um, oh. <laughs> five churros, which is which is twenty-seven lineal feet of churro. It's like forty-eight donuts. Right, <laughs> right. It's uh, four baker's dozens. Hi, Daisy. What's going on? I'm on now? Yep. Oh, God. Scary. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous. That's all but, right. But first of all, I wanted to tell the, the guy, Tony, that called up. Mm -hmm. My sister's ex-boyfriend committed suicide probably about mm, three, four months ago. Uh. So he should take it serious. Oh, you got to take it. You, you're not in a position not to take it seriously. Uh, no, not at but, all. But you can't stay in the relationship that's living a total lie, and it's unfair to both it, people. Yeah. I mean, they they had been broken up for about, oh, I'd say, I'd say about six months, and he had already found another relationship, and sure. he'd been in that relationship and everything like that, and, and he had threatened that he was going to commit suicide. I, from what I understand, at least about three times, and finally, you know, he threatened the last time, and and he he did it, and and it just, I mean, horrible. it's horrible. It, it was, it, oh God, it was, it was open casket and all, oh. and it just was not. All right, Daisy, what'd you call that? I, I right, I'm called, gonna kill myself, Daisy. <laughs> Uh, no, don't, now? don't. <laughs> I don't mean to make you. I don't mean to make you depressed. What's going on, Daisy? Okay, Sorry. my boss likes me. You, I just started kind of, a new job. What kind of place do you work in? I, I'm, I, I'm a hairdresser. And yeah. somebody owns the shop or something? Yes. Yeah. Gotta be he a chick. Owns, he owns. A, yes, I'm. A, I'm. No, he's not a chick. He's a guy. Well, there he's, are there he's are gay. straight. No, excuse me. There are straight hairdressers. Okay, they're straight male hairdressers. They're straight barbers. Hey, there's hey, not, hey, hey, hey. There's not... You've got a... All right, Jesus Christ. Someone is nervous. She sure, sure got out of her shell in a hurry. <laughs> My God. I know, first I'm not going to kill myself, but I'm going to come kill Daisy first, and then I'm going to turn the gun on myself. Now, listen, they're straight barbers, but there's no straight hairdressers. Oh, All right. there are. All right. There are. But anyways, okay... So my boss likes me. You must be some kind of good looking. <laughs> I'm not driving there like Tracy is. I <laughs> hope Tracy gets here because I'm not staying more than 45 minutes after you the already, show. You already That's cleaned a yourself promise. up. You already cleaned yourself up. I primped. Yeah, if you don't show up, I got to step out tonight. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. waste this. I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> if you. <laughs> you should... So Daisy, what's the question? San Dimas. What's the question, Daisy? All right. The question is, is it, I've already I've already confronted him, you know, saying saying that I can't have a relationship with him and stuff like that because he's my boss. I I refused a trip to Europe with him. Wow. I've only so been so he has put his cards on the table. What I'm sorry. He has asked you out, put his cards yeah. on the table. Oh God, yes. Has he acknowledged that this is sort of an inappropriate kind of relationship given your work environment? It, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of. I mean, I've already told him twice that I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Well, maybe you're gonna own the hair salon. I'm sorry. You may own the hair salon. Here's the deal, everybody. Here's the problem. People ask you out, 
and your answer to them is, here's why we can't go out, and then you offer up some BS. Reality is, Daisy's not attracted to the guy. If she was attracted to the guy, she's working at a hair salon. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is she's not going to be there for more than a year. Well, but the point is, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Right, to the guy. Daisy. I can't talk, can I? You're not attracted to the guy, are you? I I'm attracted to him, but I'm not attracted to him that much. No. Uh, okay, you jackass. God, she better be good looking. Women are jackasses. All right, I don't know. Maybe I'm just mean, but. Uh, Oh, listen, I'm tired of all our, our listeners with uh, with their arguments. You know what I mean? Daisy, you're not attracted to the guy, are you? I'm attracted to him, but I'm not attracted to him that much, no. <laughs> right, screw you. You're not attracted. Here's what I want to hear. No. No. You're right. I'm not attracted to him. Just say that. Just I'm just ahead. delighted to hear that people are starting to object to everything you say. Well, just, to me. just everybody, here's the new rule. If Drew says something or I say something that's true and it's the way you feel and we ask you, acknowledge just it. Just acknowledge it and say yes. That's true. You're right. Don't answer no, 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 and then come and explain yourself or then no and then repeat what we just said. She's not attracted to him. If she was attracted to him, she'd hook up with him and go to Europe. Why not? He owns a business, 20, well, it, 25 but, years but old. She, but here's the problem, yeah, Drew. Yeah. I, I know you don't feel like talking, so I'm just going to go here. You say to the guy, I, I'm very flattered. I'd love to, but here's why I can't. Right. I'm busy. Uh, my mom's coming to town. Because you're my boss. Yeah. Now, the guy starts, now he looks at that as the obstacle. Right. And he starts trying to work around it. Right. That's right. As opposed to, this will never happen. And you continue this, and I'll own the shop. Right. There's two issues. One is, it, A, it won't happen. B, it's harassment now, and I'm going to own this shop someday if you keep this up. Right. That's why, ladies, if you don't want to go out with a guy, say you're going out with somebody else. That's it. All you women who are single should have a, a hypothetical name in your head. Perhaps a famous athlete. <laughs> um, going out with Bruce Jenner. Who's become a woman, by the way. But, oh yeah, if you've seen him lately, he's slowly becoming a woman. It's very bizarre that the guy who won the uh, triathlon 20 years ago. Decathlon. Actually, uh, yeah. Decathlon is becoming a woman. <laughs> but he, he really is, if you've seen Bruce Jenner. He is becoming a woman. Oh, they're, they're taking you liter literally in there. I, it, it is the most bizarre thing in the world that a, that a guy, uh, Brett, do you know anything about this? That a guy who is considered the world's greatest athlete, I mean, that's what you are when yeah. you are the decathlete winner of the Olympics. And he set a record and everything. He's like been so, so, so slowly becoming a woman. I don't know if you've seen him. Uh, no. You think fat or something? He's had like a lot of weird plastic surgery, and he's like plucked his eyebrows in a weird way, and he wears like a little rouge or something, and he, he's starting to look like Liberace's boyfriend. <laughs> Remember when Liberace paid his boyfriend to look like him and get plastic surgery? Liberace had like a 20-year-old boyfriend who he took to a plastic surgeon and said, make him look like me. How bizarre. How that? effed up do you got to be? So I can, like, blow myself, essentially. Ooh. Think about that. Ooh. Talk Look about... the areas. Fill that space. <laughs> Talk about narcissism. Could you imagine dragging your partner to the plastic surgeon? You make more money than God. I mean, the amount that Liberace made one show, one night, it's taken care of. Make him look like me. Put the little clef in the chin, uh, do the cheeks, make him look like me. How whacked out and is how, that? How whacked out do the surgeons have to be to give in to that crap? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you surgeons ought to, uh, ought to take that scalpel, hold it up to your sternum, and just fall straight down on the ground. Go, to break. Go right through you, you bastards. You and the people that are uh, turning people into women. Mm. Guys, that is. So what the hell was I talking about? Break, Jenner? break, break, break. Yeah, break. Uh, no. We're going to break. Yeah. Lie. Lie, women. Tell them you got a boyfriend if a guy's asking you out and you're not interested. All right. We'll be back. 
Loveline. We'll be right back. This is Adam Carolla. And this is Dr. Drew. Stay tuned for more Love Line on the Zone 105. Something's up. Down at Sex World. And you're listening to Love Line on the Zone 105. All right. Drew. Yep. Done. Yes. Put a fork in it. All right. You're going to sit here and wait on the doorstep for Tracy. For Tracy, yeah. yeah. Listen, Tracy. Can Tracy call here? What if she's not coming? She did? She got the number? And? Yeah. All right, Tracy, if you're not coming, uh, call. Because, uh, you know, I got other, you know, I got to get home and dream about producer <laughs> Ann. <laughs> Diane Barr before tomorrow. I got to finish that off. Oh, yes. And I, um, I'm no hanky-panky with myself tonight before I go to bed, either. Why? You know, it was funny. I was just driving a car, and I was thinking to myself, my God, I'm on some kind of masturbatory tear. I just got to slow down a little bit. <laughs> I'm taking a night off. I think you're a sick bastard. I want my edge tomorrow, you know? Uh, yeah, I figure like, like, like my an athlete. Yeah, the right. eye of the tiger. You know? <laughs> it's a big game. We've got to do four shows. So, oh. so none of that. And uh, I dreamt about Ann with... Uh, with the relief before I went to bed, so imagine. The relief. It's going to go on tonight. All right, I want to thank Sherry for doing a great job and uh, the Angular One producer, Ann, as usual, for doing a wonderful job. I also want to thank Engineer Brett for coming in here and uh, filling in for Engineer Mike and doing a very outstanding job. Also, the Goo Goo Dolls for uh, hanging out and being cool tonight. Dizzy Up the Girls, the name of the CD. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! This has been Loveline. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And are probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer. KZNR Lake Girl. KZNT Cambridge. KZNT Eden Prairie. Are you kidding me? Heard it from his own mouth. This is Zone 105 Music.